you guys ever get those really, really long support tickets? And I'm talking about the tickets where the user seems to think that you need all the details. And, and I'm talking about the, the, the entire backstory, like how events in their childhood led to the career path that they ultimately took and how they one day quit their job and started this website which had technical problems and that's not the website they're emailing you about today. We'll get to that one in about eight paragraphs. You know, those kind of tickets where you feel like you need to put a bookmark in it halfway through. You guys ever get any of those? We get our fair share of tickets like that. Sometimes we also get tickets like this, though. Which, I like this ticket. <laughs> There's a lot. Of, it's pretty cool. Uh, it, I love the polite hi at the beginning, not wasting any time or bites on punctuation. And, but my favorite thing is how weird our language is and how it allows me to imagine that the user's problem is actually with operating their comfortable clothing. <laughs> but jokes about their phrasing aside, uh, what their real message was this. And I think that's something that we can all relate to. Because usability is about expectations. Our users are not blank slates when they encounter our creations, they do have expectations. And their measure of our usability is the degree to which those expectations come true. If our thing does what they expect it to do in the way they expect it to do it, they will consider it easy to use. The problem, though, is that user expectations change. They're not constant. They are constantly changing. And they're always changing in the same direction. Users will continuously expect easier and easier experiences. And this is because their, ex their expectations are ultimately shaped by their cumulative life experiences. And thus, usability experiences an inflation-like effect. Uh, you guys know about inflation. It's, uh, it's that thing where you've got some money you put it in a box and you leave it for a few years and you take it out of that box and somehow it's, it's worth less than when you put it in, the same money, you know, just worth a little less. Well, usability is a little bit like that in that if you create, say, an interface and then leave it untouched for extended period of time, it will then receive lower grade on usability tests than it did when you initially created. Um, here's a an illustration of this phenomenon which fascinates me, where you take something which is functionally unchanged, and uh, forgive the alignment issues, um, something which is functionally unchanged, and just measure customer satisfaction over time. This is, uh, this is something that is essentially the same. The only difference is the expectations of the user, which is why in 2008, I see no cell phone service, and I, I think to myself, bummer, I, I can't make a, a phone call right now. But in 2018, if I see that, I'm going ballistic because that's totally unacceptable. I'm threatening to switch providers. Uh, there's actually an academic model for this, and it's known as the Kano model. And it describes how uh, aspects of any offering which initially delight customers will inevitably, inevitably, eventually, become basic expectations. Uh, maybe the famous five-minute install, anybody? That is a, you know, a part of WordPress, which at one time was like an exciting, competitive feature, uh, and now not quite so much. So according to the Kano model, anything, anything like that, a feature which is at one time exciting and competitive eventually becomes commonplace and essentially required. Here's a quick example using our own plugin. This is data meticulously gathered from our annual user surveys, which asks users why they chose and continue to use our plugin. These are write-in answers, not multiple choice. And this is the percentage of users who wrote ease of use or simplicity as all or part of their answer in response to these questions. Now, in this time period, the interface has changed very little. In fact, I would argue that it has become marginally easier to use in this time period. And still, users do not cite ease of use as frequently as they did. 
This illustrates that inflation effect that I was talking about, where if you don't touch it, it does, in fact, get a little harder. But a, a frustrating problem that we have is our, our tendency to make these experiences even more difficult through our own uh, increased complexity through the ill-advised iterations that we go through and the feature bloat that we just can't resist implementing. And if we were to uh, compare it again to, if we were to compare it again to monetary inflation, we could say that taking all of your money, I mean, uh, no, they're creating in an interface and uh, and leaving it untouched is kind of like taking all of our money and putting it into a piggy bank. And similarly, if we were to say that cr we create an interface and we make it increasingly complex over time, that's a lot like taking all of our money and investing it into the XFL. Uh, the pressure, though, is really on us. Uh, Tony, Tony Hoare wrote a great piece called The Emperor's Old Clothes. And I recommend reading it. And in it, he wrote this fitting quote about the usability of software relative to the natural world, which I think is worth a little reflection on. But really, as I said, we have a lot of pressure on us as software creators. Uh, our users are surrounded daily by incredible technological innovations. And I'm talking about amazing technology, like the Garmin. You, you know, like GPS navigation devices. They're, they're the greatest, right? They usually get you where you need to go without that many wrong turns along the way. Except GPS navigation devices are so 10 years ago. Kind of, and this is a punchline, kind of like a lot of what we do in WordPress. And, and this is something I'm serious about, actually. I think we have a long way to go, folks. We're selling Garmin's in an age of iPhones. And just look how quickly users can disappear. Uh, this is one, an example of one technology which watched its relevance and user base rapidly decline when more convenient and simpler alternatives appeared. Sometimes I think that in WordPress we feel as though users should be grateful to us because we're not making them manually configure MySQL tables. But the, the truth is, like, we've still got a long ways to go, and we, and we can do a lot better. Every time we ask users to manually update and to copy and paste their, their license keys and to learn our pseudo code syntax and, and to edit PHP files and, and download zip files and FTP anything and to create another account, we're falling short. And on that last point, just how many username and password combos does it take to run an online operation? I don't know. It's a lot. It's too many. I can say with confidence that it's way more than any first-time WordPress user will ever expect. And I don't understand why I can navigate my life in the physical world with a modest keychain consisting of only two or three keys at most, but to run even the most basic online operation, I need dozens. It frustrates me and rant. Let's go back to our products and reflect on our product roadmaps a little bit. So the question for you is, where exactly is usability on your product roadmap? Usability must be a priority for every single release. We cannot afford to ever stop actively making our experiences easier and more intuitive. It's not something that you can achieve one time and then you're good to go. This is a question that I never get tired of asking. It, it drives me. And it also drives our team. This is, this is our biggest challenge, but I think the one most worth our time and energy. And so as you do your own reflection on the experiences that you create, whatever you're responsible for, your themes, your plugins, your software, even the websites that you are uh, in charge of, think about how you can make these experiences a little bit more intuitive. 
and the fact that it is necessary for all of us to actively do this without ceasing until the end of time. And maybe here's some brainstorming ideas. Let's just throw out a, a few ideas, ex examples of what we could do potentially to improve our experiences and make them a little bit easier. Are there, ask yourself, are, are there things in our, our UI which are uncommonly used and we could remove from most prominent views? Do we really need our users to register for an account or create a brand new one? Do we really need to make them download the files to their computer? Do they have to manually copy and paste these keys? Do they really have to manually upload those files? Is there any task that they perform regularly which we could potentially automate for them? Is there anything we could pre-configure for them? Is there anything that we're asking them to learn when we could instead rely on knowledge they already have? I've got these and a lot of other questions um, on the next slide, my slides will be easy to find. You can use these just like brainstorming ideas. Uh, but for now, really, all I want is for all of us to get out there and start uh, making things easier all together. Do you have any questions? <laughs> well, he asked. <laughs> have a question over here. Hang on a second. Hi, Kyle. Can you go back Andrew. one slide, please? Because that's what. So there's a question on there that says, "Is there anything we are making users learn which could rely on knowledge they already have?" Can you give us an example of that? Because that sounds like a really interesting question. Mm. Okay, on the spot for an example, Angie. That's always fun. I've seen, <laughs> you know, uh, product creators in WordPress like we argue about this sort of thing a lot. And sometimes, like, rail on other product creators who do things like make a, an, an interface, an, an admin interface that doesn't match WordPress. And one could argue that that's kind of like breaking the mold a little bit. And, you know, suddenly there's different types of menus and, and different color schemes and different language used. And uh, the experience is a little bit different than what the user is kind of uh, used to. But that's, uh, I'm more looking for, like, functional tasks that a user must perform. For example, you know, like if there's a, an editor-based experience and in order to productively use it, the user needs to understand uh, a unique uh, set of technology. Like for example, short codes. You know, that's something that is only in WordPress and the syntax for it is WordPress specific. And sometimes, you know, uh, we might make an experience that requires a user to learn how to use specific dynamic tags, and they might need to reference our documentation to understand the syntax that we require to make these things work. And I think that there's a lot of room for us to lean a little bit more heavily on the knowledge the user already has and use like existing uh, paradigms, uh, as a, and so to lessen the burden on the user instead of like just creating something new that might be more elegant and sophisticated, but still is just an additional thing for the user to learn in the same context. I think there's just room for us to improve. Does that kind of help, Angie? Do I have time for another question? OK, last one, and we're going to keep moving here. Thanks. Um, my question has to do with which user you're talking about, because some of us here may be uh, agencies and we build sites for clients who are also users. So when you're speaking about the user experience and having to copy license keys and things like that, which might be second nature to those of us who have been doing it for a long time, mm -hmm. are you talking about taking this to the level of, say, what Gutenberg is trying to do, which is making this more accessible to clients that we serve? Yes, absolutely. I'm talking about the, the general user trying to just get something done on their own for their own individual purposes. That's absolutely what I'm talking about. And while the, the, the tone and the theme really is around like product creators, we could, we could argue that like all of us are creating experiences in some way if we're just creating websites, if we're building them for our employer or for our clients, or if we're building websites that other people do interact with. We are creating experiences that users interact with. Users maybe have a job to do, have a mission to accomplish, have something that they want, and they are interacting with a creation of ours in order to accomplish that. And the burden is on us to make it as intuitive as simple as possible. And the point of this discussion is the fact that we need to actively continue to improve the usability over time because the bar gets, uh, the bar is a, it, it moves. Anyway, you got it. All right, thank yeah, you, thanks. Kyle.